why does whooping our kids feel like something we have to take pride in? Nah, I, I would I would be too scared though, huh? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'd be too scared because I'm I'm getting whooped for not washing clothes. I'm getting whooped for not folding clothes, not putting my clothes up. Having to ask me more than once was an ass whooping. Yes. Whatever the first thing she could grab. For sure. Whatever. First time was thunder. Second time lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And and all this. Oh, can you please? Can, hey, Shannon, can you please take out the trash? Shannon, can you go do this? Can Shannon, can you do? Th- hey, please. boy, go take that trash out. Yeah, well, please. It, it, what? what? Yeah, it, it was always in a tone. Yeah. So as you can see, even having decent respect for your kids is crazy. I understand the whole concept of, you know, the parents are the parents, the kids are the kids. I've always understood that. But does it have to be that you're trying to instill fear in all your kids? I could tell you. I'm going to tell you right off the rip. I've worked with kids for a very long time. Right? I work with kids from kindergarten. I work the kids all the way up to the high school. Okay? I work with all ethnicities. I can always tell you. The kids that I always found the had the worst behavioral problems are the kids who got whoopings. It was always the parents who, when they... When the parents used to be so adamant about whooping their kids, like let's just say, for example, sometimes we would get a kid and we would let the mother know what happened. And then they'd be like, Ooh, I'm going to beat his butt when I get home. They would say that right in front of us to the point where we sometimes would try to tell the parents they did something wrong, but try to make it positive. Like they did, they had a bad day, went their best day, but you know, they're still, still trying to improve. Because every time we would say, hey, you know, little Jimbo did this, the the parents would get so mad and talk about whooping their kids. And those kids were always the worst. Always the worst. Now, Chad said something earlier in here and said that this little girl who had, you know, stolen $15, uh, stolen $7,000 from her father. Chad said they couldn't have been black because as a black people <laughs> don't do things like that. Okay, hey, my 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 felon melanin brothers and sisters, just because your parents whooped the fuck out of you didn't make you a better kid. It made you scared. And I've told you, the kids that I work with, and I've worked with so many kids, the worst kids I ever worked with, I'm talking behavioral problems to the top of the roof. I'm talking about couldn't control them. They were so destructive in the classroom. You have to clear out the classroom for these kids. Where the kids who got whoopings all the time. It should not bring you joy to talk about whooping your kids. It should not bring you joy to be like, oh, well, my, my granddaddy, and it slapped me. It just shouldn't be that way. I'm telling you. Now, are there kids who didn't get any discipline? And they went off to be horrible. Yes, that does happen. But that's normally the only time I'm being honest. The times I saw that the most is when the kids became adults. But that happens to all of us. Sometimes you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But the whole notion that black kids are so great because they get whoopings at home in any other ethnicity group. And we know what other ethnicity group they're talking about. We know what they're talking about. It's so much worse because they don't. We see the stereotypes, and I get it. Comedians make jokes. That's what their job is. They're supposed to point out this stuff. But really, stereotypically, what I have seen when it comes to kids and the ones who behave the worst are normally the ones who get beaten. <laughs> Let's just be honest. They're the ones who get beat the most, the ones that the parents are adamant. I can't wait to whoop my kids. I just want to talk about this a little bit more. Because the way Shannon and you can go watch this yourself, the way Shannon and Chad go into this is that it's 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 woo. I mean, I'd have tore them out the frame. My my grandma would have did this and did that. They talk about it like they take pride in it, like they couldn't wait to get their kid and whoop them because they did something so silly. I get it, but I can tell you when I also worked in the school, so many of the the professionals they love having that control. Parents alike and teachers and other people in authority, they love having that control over kids. So the ones I saw, like I said, who got beat the most by fathers and mothers, doesn't matter. It's because it felt like they want that control that they don't have in their own life. 
Now, these two men are very wealthy. I get it at this point. But for me personally, what I've noticed when it comes to whooping people's, whooping your children, if you decide to go about it, that's your own business. But there should be no, I, I can't wait to whoop them. Or because I whoop them, they're, they're good. I, I see this all the time in comment sections everywhere I go. When somebody does something wrong, some kid does something wrong, it's because in the comments immediately come, oh, it's because they never got a whooping growing up. No, that's not it. Just so, sometimes kids do the darnest things, okay? Sometimes kids just have a bad mistake, have bad mistakes because fear, fear of you, you heard, you just heard Chad say, I was too scared. He got whooped for not doing the laundry right. That see, when you're just looking for a reason to whoop your kids for anything, that's just so crazy to me. Also, it I'm going to tell you, for me growing up, I'm a black kid. I was a black kid. <laughs> and I, I also received whoopings. The whoopings did not deter me from doing bad things. It, it really didn't. It just made me scared to get caught. It didn't, because I didn't learn anything from whoopings. It just said, do something bad, you get beat. I mean, that's not really a good learning tool. But what did deter me most of the time from doing bad things for the rest of my life is when my uh, dad or my mom actually sat me down and talked to me. They started doing that as I grew up into a teenager. It was the talkings that helped me. Those are what started changing my life. That's why most of the time I don't do bad things. Not to say I don't still screw up in life, you know, in other ways. But what made me a better kid as I got older is when my mom would sit me down and talk to me. My dad would sit down and talk to me and say, son, why are you doing this? Why are your grades low? Why did you do this to that person? Why did you do that to him? Why did you do that to her? Those were the things that made me a better person. The whoopings just made me scared to get caught. It didn't change my behavior because there was nothing talked about. If you're always looking for an instance to get the belt or get the switch, I just don't believe. And I'm just basing this off of, well, like I said, all the kids I work with, the ones that's got those beatings, and I'm talking about, you know, anything from belts to extension cords to um the uh, the switches and all that stuff, which is, if you don't know what a switch is, it's just going outside and grabbing a stick from outside on a tree. You whoop your kids with a whip, pretty much. That's what a switch was. A switch would leave welts because it's like a whip. That's what we prided ourselves on. We prided ourselves on beating our children with sticks or hurting our children with switches or hurting our children with extension cords. That sounds insane, does it not? But that's what we've been ingrained to keep doing to our kids, and they get worse and worse. I don't need to tell you the statistics. It has gotten much better in our community. But you know who commits the most crimes most of the time, okay? We see what happens to our brothers and sisters when we're deleting each other. We see who has the highest self-deletion of children. We see what community does that. So to say that that's working and anything else doesn't is just foolish to me. Like I said, you choose to do whatever you choose to do. I'm just saying, based off what I've seen, and the numbers don't lie, <laughs> black kids getting whoopings does not make them grow up into better young men. It really doesn't. I am telling you, it is those talks. It is those communication. Now. It's easy for people to also say the talking and all that stuff doesn't work because some white kid does drugs sometime when he gets older. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. They pick some weird scenario and go, well, white kids can't do it because look at Jimmy. He ended up going to jail for doing um, some of that, some of that white girl. It's like it does happen. You know, there's people who do drugs and people who go to jail. Doesn't mean that they didn't, it wasn't because their parents didn't whoop them to death when they were kids. <laughs> that's just not it bro I'm telling you that whooping stuff normally just brings fear in a lot of kids I remember I'm gonna shut up I remember one kid man I remember one kid we had we said we're gonna have to let your mother know what happened today this kid was scared to death now you tell me something this kid was scared to death for us to tell his parents what happened but he was still doing stuff bad even after that moment he was scared to death he couldn't come to school the next day. Y'all know what happened because he got whooped. 
I mean, he comes to school the next day. He came to school like two days later. Still a horrible kid. Still horrible. Still acted up in the classroom. Still was a hazard. I mean, a difficult child to deal with. So did the whoopings work? No, it just made the kid scared for his life. He just knew what was going to happen because this kid probably gets beat for anything he does wrong. So let's stop with the notion that we are a proud community because we smack our kids around. Let's just stop it because we want to grab sticks and extension cords or whatever we can find in the house to lay it on the kids because we want some sense of control. Let's just call it what it is. It's, it's, it's a sense of control to make you feel like you're powerful when you're fucking not. It's a disgrace. Okay? I get it. The, all ethnicities have some form of discipline. But the, the, the fact that we take so much pride in it like we want to do, we waiting for our kids to fuck up. If he folds the laundry wrong, he getting beaten down. I knew one last kid here who used to get beat because he couldn't tie his shoes. He was trying to learn how to tie his shoes and got beat to smithereens for it. And it was just like, man. And this is what and this is what today people call a whooping. This is what people call whoopings. It was with the belt. And it's just because the little kid couldn't tie his shoes. The boy wasn't all there. He was trying his best. He just didn't know how to do it. It's the same thing you see in all these skits that you see on the, the reels and the shorts. When the little boy says, Johnny had five apples. He ate three. How many does he have left? And then the little boy goes, oh, uh, well, one. And then the black mama says it again. She gets more frustrated. Black mama says it again, gets more frustrated. And now she says, go grab my belt. Go grab a switch. Because you can't do fucking math. Now, it sounds like a joke, but that's what really happens in the community. A little boy can't get it together, and he feels like he's got to get a beating for that. I mean, sorry, guys. I mean, what the fuck does that even mean? With math, he's struggling to tie his shoes. He's struggling in the classroom, and that means he's got to get beat down. Mom, like I told you, my mother and my father used to sit me down when I got B's and C's and F's. My mom would literally sit down and say, are you even trying? That was way more powerful than if my mom would have just said, well, you got to get beat for it because he don't care. He don't give an F. My parents never got frustrated with me when it came to that kind of stuff. They knew my strength. They knew my weaknesses. I ended up going to honors college because my parents didn't treat me like that. They didn't treat me like I was dumb. Now, I don't know if they believed I was dumb because I thought I was dumb. And my mom would be like, hey, you can do better. But at the end of the day, I was still able to make something of myself. Not perfect. Like I stopped, you've seen it before. I told my stories here. I still screw up in a lot of ways. But I, for most people, I've grew up to be okay. And I still think I got a good ways to go to be even better. But I'm telling you, those whoopings are not the reason I am the man I am today. It was talking to my mom and talking to my father. My last, one of my last talks I had with my father before I moved out. But I told my father, I just wanted to make him proud. And my father said back to me, I am proud of you, son. That changed my fucking life. That is what I, I needed. I didn't need no fucking whoopings. I didn't need to be scared of my father. I needed to hear those talks. So if you have an emotional parent and y'all wonder why these people are so quick to cut their parents off, to go ahead and say, I don't want no contact with them. Because if that's how you treated them and also all they ever got was, rash and aggressive if any time they messed up or if they made a mistake such as this young girl who made a mistake and took five seven thousand dollars out of her father's account or oh, so now she's got a you got it i know they're making jokes but shannon would be like oh i would have to go to jail for what i'm gonna do to that kid it's like man is it that serious your kid makes a mistake and you feel like you gotta beat them to the point where you gotta go to jail bro at some point we need to kind of like stop being so emotional and be like hey you know what if my kid did that OK, if my kid did that, stole seven thousand dollars from me, would I be upset? Absolutely. I'd be upset. But I don't think my first thought is, man, I'm going to beat them down when I see them. It's just that is that's not in my nature. That is not something that riles up in me to want to beat my kid first. My thing would be like, man, I, I would be upset. I would be disappointed that my kid felt like they had to steal from me. And some kids just do that. But to me, it's just it, the first our first instinct shouldn't be to promote harming our children every second we get let's start to do something different 
because that's really not helping our community. Sitting, and I know it sounds so um, crazy for that stuff, but my by the way, if you, in case you didn't notice, my parents are black, and they did sit down and talk to me. They realized that helped me more as I got older. They realized that helped me more. So, please. Before you want to promote harming our kids, can we promote talking to them first? If that's what you choose to do, whatever. I think it's we are not a better generation or a worse generation because our kids, our parents beat us less. I think at least giving our kids a chance to explain themselves. Because remember, they're kids. They don't know what's going on in this world. We are just when we are kids, we're just growing up and trying to learn things. So beating us every time we mess up is it's like we're a, You heard what I was about to say. Beating us every time we get it wrong like we're slaves. It's kind of crazy to me. How about every now and then we have a talk instead of looking for a reason to beat them? Anyway. <laughs>